Hey folks, I'm going to be a little bit different because I'm profoundly deaf. If you're going to ask questions, you're going to have to come up to me after the session because I read lips. Thank you. So, what I thought I would do is, um, first of all, give you a little bit of background where I come from. So, we're down in Bass Coast. So, Bass Coast, of course, is um, in a beautiful part of the world. The school covers um, about 1,500 kids. But it's a very unique school in that the, um, we cover 864 square kilometres. That means kids probably travel an hour and a half to school and then an hour and a half back, three hours on a bus, big ask for a kid. And um, I've been delivering things in um, different ways. I thought I'd give you a little bit of a history. I presented first at a Moodle meet in 2010 at the Convention Centre. I've done 2015 at Monash Uni, 2016 at Perth. I thought I'd go over and give a bit of homage to, um, to the, the birthplace of Moodle and, of course, today. Um, I was in industry. I ran a private registered training organisation for 15 years and we started with Moodle 1.4. I found something. We were doing IT training anyway. I thought, well, this is pretty cool. We'll be able to edit and modify this. And um, when I went into secondary schools, I said to them, oh, I'm not going to use paper teaching. They said, well, you're mad. And they wouldn't give me service space, so I had to use my laptop. And so I got in the DNS settings, if you know anything about that, and told the technicians just to put Beasley, and so the kids would put that in the location bar and get Moodle off my laptop. They give me service space, and now we've got significant more courses, as you can see. There's a huge list that I keep archived because there's nothing quite like Moodle in being able to see stuff that kids did in 2009. I've still got them. I see those kids down the street and they go, oh, you an idiot. Um, 2019, I'm a learning specialist. Um, in Victorian schools, we have a, a group of um, people who have been promoted as leadership group, but our specific focus is on teaching and learning. It's a really powerful and positive career move for Victorian education. The... Um, <laughs> You may or may not know about secondary education in Victoria, but we call them the three big Vs, Victorian Certificate of Education, Victorian Certificate of Applied Learning and Vocational Education and Training in the VCE sector. So 16 and 18 year old kids, uh, VCE is the broad general program. So that's the one where kids go in, get their ATAR, Australian Tertiary Achievement Rank, which a lot of you post-secondary providers would be using for filtering students. VET is available for both streams, and that's a really important thing to understand. VCAL, kids go on and get apprenticeships and traineeships, they do two days a week work, and they must do vocational education and training. We have very poor provision for vocational education and training in the Basque Coast Shire. Country, a bootstrap. In Australian country, as the Wollongong guys show, we bootstrap ourselves. We have to, because there's no services. And so we do internal VET. And, um, what I do, uh, which is a little bit unique, we, I run ver, uh, VET Certificate 3 in Creative Digital Media. I also do VET Certificate 2 in Business. And, um, but I have mixed groups. The only way we can offer this to get the numbers up is I mix the groups. So I have VCE Year 11 and 12 students, VCAL Year 11 and 12 students, with special needs students, two teacher aides, and I teach both programs simultaneously. And so I use video and self-management absolutely critically through the, through the thing. Outreach is a program I started in 2014 for mentally ill students. We have an epidemic of mental illness amongst our teenagers in our community and we ignore that at our peril. So we provide education by visiting the students at their home and, they deliver, and I deliver through um, Moodle. I wanted to get some definitions out of the way. Differentiation is an incredibly important thing to understand in all education. Differentiation, of course, gives the ability to educate and train students irrespective of where they start. And it's our obligation as 21st century educators to completely differentiate our training. And how you target that instruction is something I wanted to, just to show you. That's what I'm here for. Why Moodle is so perfect for those sorts of things. And so, Another differentiation, we all talk about blended learning, but nobody actually puts it up on the stage. And I'd like to put out to you, the Department of Education in Early Childhood um, decided that they would give us a definition of blended learning, and it's an approach based on the needs of the students. Go figure. You mean teaching and learning is about the student? 
So, another definition. The difference between a learning management system and student management system is something in state education, secondary education, I've always struggled with. My staff do not know that there's a difference. We use a student management system called Compass. Every school almost in the state uses it, and they say, well, that's a learning management system. No, it's not. You can say so the kids can upload a document. There's no engagement, there's no differentiation. Um, it's, a, it's an assessment and, report and recording of attendance. Learning management is the ability to manage learning. And I can't stress how important it is for us in this community, our Moodle community, that we push learning management. And the students use the systems to manage their own learning. And that's, the, that's a really important point. Did you realise that in Victorian government have negotiated deals with all the major vendors? We get the Adobe suite for nothing. That's $8,000 every year for nothing. We get ClickView, which is a um, video platform for nothing. That's um, $12,000. We get access to Office 365, we get access to Google Docs for nothing. So I've had staff say to me, look at this Moodle thick, that's going to go by the wayside. And I said, whoa, whoa, quite the reverse. Moodle's the glue. We need to have a contextual based learning system that allows us to draw collaboration software from wherever we go and tie it together. And I'm absolutely insistent upon that. So. Why Moodle? Well, everybody knows this. It's accessible. Yeah, you can get individual pathways happening. And I use a blended video and direct instruction. And I use, the, the videos are intensive. It's, it's a really important thing to kids to learn how to use videos. So what I thought I would do um, is to show you how I've established at our school. We use Office 365 and um, to do collaboration. We use Compass for marking roles, but Moodle's where course documentation occurs in, in sequence. So I do it either in topics or week by week or um, a range of different ways of structuring it and actually building their knowledge. Now, it's really interesting because I still have resistance amongst my colleagues about Moodle and I will see students who have finished, gone off to go to uni and they come back to me and say, geez, Beasley, I'm glad you're a pain in the ass. You made us do Moodle. And we're three, four, five months ahead of our peers. They haven't touched it at Deakin. They haven't touched it at La Trobe. But they don't know how to use it. I know how to use it because you forced it down my throat. Every secondary school should be using this system. And the fact that I feel like I'm a minority here, I think there's, what, three or seven secondary, student, secondary school people in a group of three or 400 people is because we're not pushing our staff to think of learning management as a, in a systems approach. It's free. And as the, um, as the guy from Illawarra was saying, the skills base is really, really tough. So, I'm giving you some content examples now. Grouping's a critical way of doing any combined things because you can set ex access by groups. This is the magic. So, as my intermediate VCAL delivery, you can see there's some topics there. There's my VCE, same year, same year level, they're peers, in the same room at the same time, different course. But it's the same course, because it's based on accessibility. Are you in that group and have you done this thing? That's what you're gonna see. It takes ages to set up, but once you've set it up, it's, it's like automation, it's perfect, I think. I have a, one of the things I really wanted to emphasise about differentiation is we have a special needs students in that group. I said we've got two teaching aides in the same group. One of them has Down syndrome. His mother has been a fierce advocate for him to be in consistent secondary education all his education life. He's 19 now, he's in year 11. And I'm just working on motor skills with him. I'm working on his computer literacy. And he has his own videos, but you know, he knows he looks around and it looks similar to everybody else. He doesn't feel like he's being separated out at all. And that's, you can't do that with anything else. That, that's where the access is the most critical, I think. This is a different course. This is the VCAL business course. You can see I do everything in topics. I love collapsed topics. I really like the collapsed topics as, a, as an interface. And um, that's my year 12, so my year 12 um, VCE students are working to study scores. So we're based on SACs, which are called you know, school assessed coursework. They get a study score for that, contribute to their ATAR, as most VET and the VCE programs do. 
My senior um, VCAL, Creative Digital Media people, are working on just a partial certificate. Again, different courses. Now, I thought I'd just show you very quickly how I try and structure the video. So now we've done some work on the GST. This is quite complex, so bear with me. But we're going to use Google Sheets and a chart to try and map that. We click on our little square. I've logged into Google. And I can go to... I, I'm going to kick through here because there's lots of... Now, taking the videos, how do I encourage my staff to take videos on themselves? First of all, we're professional learners. And we should... I don't edit these. If I make a mistake, I make sure the mistake is shown so the kids can see me work my way out of the mistake. It's really important that we participate in the learning experience as a team in a classroom. I'm not an expert. I'm a professional learner. That's my expertise. And be able to put myself out there and say, here's how you try some stuff. So what we want to get to is something where we have a menu. You can see that I've done this. So that's another and way of showing something. This is my year 12 VCE. Screen, please. So what I've done, and Kai's suggestion, I actually had it. What I've done here is I've given, I've opened up a couple of things for you. They know I close things off. They know I open things up. In fact, the students say to me, it's wonderful because they don't feel overwhelmed, but they feel like I'm an iceberg. Yeah? Here's a tip, and they know there's a whole heap of crap underneath, but they know it's there, so they know that I'm prepared. And I think that's a really critical thing we do. This is an example of my language I use for my special needs. There's a, a couple of special needs, and I want to, the language. Okay, Jesse. Now we're going to look for... I'll, 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 I'll pause it there. I type slowly. He types slowly, so I type slowly. He does things slowly, so it's slower. And... Some of the lessons I want to share with you is they need to have continual exposure to this. So I insist that the kids log on every morning, every time they're in the classroom. And unlike a lot of TAFEs and, you know, corporates, networks in schools get hammered because the kids log on at and then 50 minutes later log off and go to another class. So they have to get in the habit of logging in. That's what I mark my attendance on. I was there, Beasley. No, you weren't. You didn't log in. But I was there. You didn't log in. Bang. Consi consistent immersion in that headspace. Um, how they use it, what the icons mean. Actually be explicit. And then clear instruction on the step-by-step. -step. I, sat with, I sat with a couple of my special needs students with their aides and said to them, if you learn how to use a video for instruction, you can teach yourself anything for the rest of your life. It's the most powerful thing you can do for yourself. So to contextualise video instruction within Moodle as the glue is a really critical way for them to see that there's a logic step-by-step -step process. So I, can't you just show me, Beasley, you're being lazy? No, I have shown you. Rewind it. Because, of course, they've put a video on, they kick back and just watch it. No, no, no. Watch a bit, do a bit. Watch a bit. Be that explicit. The kids don't know how to do that. And I thought I'd share in the last couple of minutes some thoughts about secondary education moving forward. I love the fact that Martin gives us a predictor every Moodle move. We use a gradual release learning model. I do, we do, you do. Videos are perfect for that. I'm doing it. And I'm doing it over and over and over and over again. You can rewind it as much as you like. And this idea of high impact teaching strategies, collaboration. 21st century skills informs my practice. And some of the, um, the most important one here is self-regulation. Without Moodle, you can't do that. Really, it's almost impossible in that combined class not to have um, them being self-regulated. So the Moodle's the glue. And some of the reports I use to inform my practice, I don't know whether you know of Educause, they used to be called the New Media Consortium. You must, for higher ed, you must bookmark the New Horizons report because they predict one to two, four to five, or they do wicked problems and good problems. And um, Open Universities UK, my God, what they have contributed to the Moodle project is spectacular, if you know anything about what Open U um, Uni UK have done. And I've, for our conclusion here, I've done a little, this is how my mind works, 
This is my mind map about the ways in which various reports can fit within the 21st century framework. Drones, AI. Every report talks about the use of drones or AI or robots in instruction. How prepared are you for that in higher education? Every report talks about the achievement gap, the digital gap. As a country teacher, it's critical my students get the skills to use these learning management systems. And it's critical for my special needs people to know they can be empowered. Thanks very much.